Hey guys, it's me, Carrie. And first off, let me start with an apology. I had completely forgotten about reading Dicey's song. It just kind of flew to the back of my brain and I lost all track of time. And I realized today that I actually haven't posted a video of reading this in almost two months. So for those of you who are following along for your summer reading, I'm really sorry <laughs> that I dropped the ball. Um, but I'm going to get back to the book now. So anyway, this is part 18. We're actually starting chapter 9 technically, but it's part 18 since we don't read full chapters all the time. Anyway, let me just dive right back into it. Sammy ran up the street to meet Dicey as she rode to work the next Monday. It had rained the night before and he splashed in the puddles. The arms on his sweater flapped and his gait was awkward as if his knees might at any time give out. It wasn't until he was close to her that Dicey saw why. He was laughing. You know what she did? She came to school. She beat... Who? Dicey interrupted. She gave him about half her attention, glad that he was glad. The rest of her mind was trying to remember something about Miss Eversleigh, something that had begun to tickle at the edge of her memory while she was separating eggs and home ec. But it had nothing to do with eggs, and how to beat the white stiff, and how the yolks were rich in iron. Graham, Dicey, are you listening? Then Dicey did listen. Graham, what about her? I told you, she came to school. She had a bag of marbles, and they weren't new ones either. They were old. She said she found them in her attic, and they must have belonged to one of her sons. She gave them to me, he cried. I left them safe with Millie, but she gave them to me. You can see them. So she brought you some marbles at school. This was strange behavior. No, that's not what I said. Laughter poured out of Sammy's face like lights from a firecracker. It was at recess, lunch recess, and she played marbles with us. She won all of them, everybody's, even mine. Dicey stopped walking and waited to hear the rest of this story. A couple of firecrackers were going off inside her head, too. She made us let some girls play, too. And that got Ernie mad. But Graham said if he was going to play, he was going to play fair, or she wasn't going to be in any game with him. She was kneeling down, and her skirt got in a puddle. How did, did everyone play? Everyone wanted to. They asked her to come back tomorrow, but she said she was the lone marble ranger and only came once. Why are we howling, baby? Oh, my cats. Um, okay. So, oh, okay. So she was the lone marble ranger and she only came once, so we'd better learn all we can. Daisy could picture her grandmother crouching down among the second graders, concentrating on the marbles. The lone marble ranger, Sammy giggled. So we did. And then she gave everybody back the marbles she won because she said she had had so much more practice. Except me, he said. She gave me her old ones. Good oh, Dicey said, that being about the only thing she could think of to say. Yeah, Sammy agreed. And Custer said he wished he had a grandmother like that. And Ernie said he was glad he didn't have a crazy grandmother. And what did you say, Dicey asked. Nothing. Why should I say something, Sammy asked. It was fun. I wish she would come back. They asked me, would she? And I said, nope, Graham does just what she says she will. But wasn't that a crazy thing for her to do? He asked happily. Crazy like a fox, Dicey thought, but did not say. Graham had also been in to see Millie, and Millie had something to say about Ab when she's up to something. What was she up to? Dunno, Millie said, but she made me laugh, I guess. She had that devilment look in her eye, and I guess I've seen it often enough to know what that means. What does it mean, Dicey asked, but Millie couldn't tell her. Dicey was washing the outside of the front windows, taking it slowly because the sun on her shoulders felt so good, when she felt somebody come stand beside her, Miss Eversley, in her same suit and pin with her same teacher face. Dicey smiled at her. She couldn't help it. Her mind was still on Graham beating all the second graders at marbles. I didn't know you could smile, Miss Eversley remarked. Something about her tone of voice and her glance made Dicey remember. Miss Eversleigh, she dropped the squeegee into the bucket and dried her hands on her jeans. I wanted to ask you. You were talking to us, but I wasn't listening. Last week? But I think I'd like to know what you said. I was talking to you, Miss Eversleigh said. Mostly to you. I was talking about you. But what did you say? Why do you ask? Because I have a feeling I should have paid attention. That was as far as Dicey was willing to go. Miss Eversleigh pursed her lips. I said that it was important to learn the things we are doing in the class. Then Dicey found she could remember. Because they take skill. That's what you said, isn't it? You said it takes as much skill as building something. Miss Eversley nodded. She was looking at Dicey as if she couldn't understand what Dicey was up to. 
Okay, Dicey said. Thank you. I remember now. I never meant to be disrespectful to you. And, Mrs. Miss Eversley insisted. And, Dicey asked. She knew, though, what Miss Eversley wanted her to say. Instead, she said, I guess I think it's interesting to say that. I'll think about it. But won't you try harder and care more? Miss Eversley inquired. How can I say that? I haven't even thought about it yet. You're a strange child, Miss Eversley said. She was holding a purse in her two hands right in front of her stomach. I guess so, Dicey agreed. Well, it was nice running into you, Miss Eversley said. She didn't sound like she thought it was nice. Miss Eversley walked on down the street. Dicey forgot about her and turned back to her work. Maybe it was important to know how to do those things. If Graham didn't know them, where would the Tillermans be? Maybe Dicey ought to try to learn them. If you learned something, that didn't mean you had to do it, just because you knew how to do it. All it meant was if you had to, or if you wanted to, then you could. When Graham put a tall apple pie down on the table for dessert, Dicey knew she was up to something. When Graham brought out a quart of ice cream to serve with the pie, Dicey was sure of it. Dicey sat quiet while the pie was cut and scoops of ice cream put on top of the flaky brown crust. The pie was still warm. You could tell because the ice cream slipped off the top and nestled down against the side of the slice. The apples inside smelled tart and sweet and had been cooked to a deep honey brown color. Dicey put her nose over it and inhaled the aroma. Apple, cinnamon, nutmeg. What did you do today? She asked Graham as if she didn't know. Graham fixed her with a mischievous eye. Not much. I changed the sheets and did a wash. I made a pie. I played a game or two of marbles and won. She waited. Dicey didn't say a word, didn't let her face show any emotion. As you undoubtedly heard, Graham said at last. Dicey grins. Then I, then I picked up a few things at Millie's. Dicey just waited. She was sure there was something more. And I had an appointment at the lawyers, Graham announced, at which I was told that you are now legally and officially and permanently and any other E they could think of my responsibility. We're adopted, James asked. That's what I said. No, it's not, he pointed out. Well, it's what I meant, and since you understood me, it must be what I said. The children looked at one another around the table. Graham looked at the pie she was eating. Good-o, Sammy said. Good-o, he repeated. And we'll always live here, Maybeth asked. You are my heirs and assigns, Graham said. I thought it was good news, she declared. It is, Dicey said. That explained Graham's mood. Dicey herself had felt pretty good after hearing about the marble game. She felt pretty terrific now, knowing they were adopted. If this was really their home now, and it was, she could understand why she felt safe now. But why was she also feeling excited? I'm glad to hear that, Graham said to her, because I also made a call today since I was downtown and the weather was fair. I called to meet the family of your, of your friend's Mina. What? Dicey said. Her fork clattered down onto the floor. She bent to pick it up. For the same reason that I took on the second grade at Marbles, Graham pointed out. Dicey didn't know what to think. She wondered what Mina's parents had made of Graham's visit. She couldn't think what Mina would have, would have to report about the call. As it turned out, Mina didn't have much to report. She told Dicey about it during lunch. I don't know, Dicey. I don't know what got into her. What gets into her? I don't know, Dicey said, although she had some idea. They were confused, Mina told her. They didn't know what to think. Do you know what she said to my father first thing? She didn't tell me anything, Dicey said. She wasn't sure whether she wanted to know or not. She said, I've come to put a face on the boogeyman. What was Dad supposed to answer to that? I don't know, Dicey mumbled. Graham certainly didn't beat around any bushes. Then laughter escaped her, even though she tried to hold it in. I wish I'd been there. It went all right, I think, Mina admitted. My mother said she's a lady, no question. Mom only says that about any white woman who doesn't ask if she does daily cleaning. Graham wouldn't do that, Dicey protested. She's a minority. Dicey looked at her friend with the idea, with an idea of the difficulties this girl might face, and she knew she had only the vaguest idea of them. Mina must know much, much more. What are you going to do? What do you want to do? When I grow up, Mina asked laughing. Who knows? My mom's an RN, and there's always work. But I don't know. I'd rather be a doctor than a nurse if I was going into medicine. I think I'm smart enough. What I want is not to do something just because it's available to me because I'm black and female. You know, I really want to choose. What about you? Dicey was surprised. I've always been so busy trying to keep things together until tomorrow. 
I never really thought about much else. I just do what needs to be done. I'm pretty sure I want to go to college, Mina continued. What about you? I told you, I never thought more than a day ahead. They looked at each other with curiosity, with interest. The world was full of surprises, and Dicey began to believe interesting surprises. It was mostly the people who made it surprising. Jeff, who waited for after school and made it clear he intended to walk with her to work, reinforced that opinion. Jeff, carrying his guitar, slung over his back again. He put his books on top of Dicey's in the basket of her bicycle. He took her bicycle from her and wheeled it for her. It felt strange to Dicey to walk without anything to carry, without anything to push, with just the walking to do. Jeff talked about how he had a good time at Dicey's house. He talked about the weather. He told her his father was a college professor and was gone three days a week up to Baltimore to teach. Why do you live way down here? Dicey asked. Jeff shrugged, something he didn't want to talk about. Dicey changed the subject back to the singing they had done. May Beth liked it, she told him. She liked you, she added, because it was the truth. Well, Jeff said. He looked at her with glances out of the side of his eyes as if he was nervous. What's the matter with you? Dicey finally demanded. They were standing beside the porch of Millie's store, and he wouldn't give her the bicycle so he could take the books out and let her go to work. She saw Sammy watching through the window. There's something I want to ask you, he began. Dicey knew what it was. I said she likes you, and that means any time you want to come back and sing with her, it'll be fine. I didn't mean to be so unfriendly. When you first got there, but she has to work hard at school and she's taking piano lessons only on weekends, okay? But, Jeff said, he swallowed and tried again. There's a dance at school. Dicey nodded. She'd seen the posters. Will you go with me? Dicey's mouth opened. It opened and it stayed open. She grabbed for the handles of her bike. Jeff didn't look at her, just reached in for his books. What was she supposed to say? You haven't said, he prodded her. But I can't do that, Dicey told him. I didn't think so. Then why did you ask, Dicey demanded. Because I want you to, he snapped back at her. There's no crime in that, he pointed out. Dicey liked the way he got angry when she was unfriendly. She didn't know why she liked it, but it made her willing to explain. I'm too young for dances. I'm only in eighth grade. I don't want to go to dances and all. Besides, she added desperately, high school boys don't take out eighth graders. Who cares, he asked. Dicey couldn't answer that. Certainly she didn't. I really am too young, she assured him. Really. At that, he smiled again. Good, Dicey thought. We can continue to be friends. But next year, you'll be in ninth grade, he said. I think so. And I'll be in eleventh. You'd know more about that than I would. Ninth graders are much older than eighth graders. Are they, Dicey asked. This is a pretty stupid conversation, but she was enjoying it. I'm going to ask you again next year, he said. Okay, Dicey answered. She leaned her bike against the window and went inside without looking back. She didn't care if he asked her again next year, just as long as he didn't ask her again tomorrow. The last thing Dicey wanted to do was go to a dance and jump and jiggle around, getting hot and sweaty. She was bored just thinking about it. On the other hand, she admitted to herself. It was nice he wanted to ask her. It was flattering. She was singing when she pulled the big broom out of the closet. When first unto this country, a stranger, I came. You're certainly cheerful today, Millie observed. Mina, walking part of the way home with Dicey, said the same thing. Dicey was watching Sammy ride on ahead on her bike and circle back, then ride off ahead again. Mina said, you haven't said anything sharp or cross for half a mile. Did Jeff ask you to the dance? What do you know about that? Dicey demanded. Mina laughed. That's more like it. I know I'll be going to it. I know Jeff asked me if I thought you'd go with him. I said probably not. He said he didn't think so either, but he thought he'd ask. Were we right? Yeah, Dicey said. Why should he ask you first? Mina shrugged. He's smart enough. You're not an easy person, Dicey. Well, that was no surprise, although it surprised Dicey that Mina thought so. I think he only asked you this time because he was afraid you'd get popular, and he wanted you to know. Yeah. Never mind, Dicey said. But I don't think he needs to worry about that. I told him I think you're pretty strong meat. What does that mean? You know perfectly well what it means, Dicey Tillerman. Dicey guessed she did, and she guessed she liked that. So are you, she pointed out. Yeah, but I've got charisma, Mina argued, and I'm a clown. I'm much easier to take. If you think about it, everybody has something wrong about them, Dicey said, following her own thoughts. I mean, some flaw or something you just don't like. But some people, 
it doesn't seem to matter so much. You know, they're just people, no matter what. You won't like them. Take Millie. I started out just respecting her because she's not smart. Not at all. But she's been a good friend to my grandmother all her life without changing. And she never asks anything much from anybody. And I don't know. Now I think she's pretty unusual. Or Mr. Chappelle, especially these days. I mean, he acts like I can't do anything wrong. And that's not right, Mina. And the way he pussyfoots around me, it makes me sick. But I never liked him before and I never will. Or like blood relations. You always like them no matter how much you don't, Mina observed. Dicey nodded enthusiastically. But with other people, not family, you choose, she said. What do you think? Do you think we choose people by what's important to us? Like whether someone's brave or not? So bravery is one of the things you choose by, Mina asked. Sure, Dicey said, and music. Music's not a quality, Mina protested. Dicey noticed that Mina had them talking about Dicey again. She made a mental note to ask Mina what she chose by, but was too interested in her own ideas to do that right then. It is too, Dicey insisted. You can't be music, Mina argued, but you can have it. But you have it, don't you? Dicey asked. Don't you? Mina started laughing instead of saying anything. That's what I like about you, Dicey. With everybody else, they want to talk about boys or clothes, having babies, you know? Dicey didn't know. But with you, I don't know anything about boys or clothes or having babies, Dicey pointed out. But if you did, you wouldn't talk about them the same way, I bet, Mina said. All right, guys, we are going to stop right there in the middle of page 166. Again, I apologize for neglecting the book for so long. It was not for lack of interest in continuing to read it to you guys. I just completely, my mind's just not been working properly. <laughs> I'm all over the place. But I hope you enjoyed that section. Um, we don't have a whole tremendous lot left to go. Like I said, we stopped on 166. And altogether, there are 211 pages. So, yeah, we don't have a whole lot left to go, but there's still some really, really big events to come. So I hope you guys continue listening and enjoying with me. Um, again, apologies to anyone who's been waiting for almost two months for me to continue. I will definitely get back to you way sooner than that with the next section. And until then, have a great rest of your day. and I'll be back soon with more stuff. Bye, guys.